My name's Dave Hewton, um, lifelong Liverpool supporter. Dad took me when I was about six years old. Season ticket holder, first season ticket, 1979. But we'd go down the road and then it sort of became a bit of a fashion catwalk. You know, the, the fashion was changing and you, you, you felt you wanted to be a part of that as well. So the training shoes first appeared in 1977, 78. And then suddenly about 1980, I think it must've been, you know, start of the season. There was a few pairs of strap over trainers around. We're saying to these lads like, well, you know, where do you get your trainees from? You know, the strap over trainers, never seen them before. And they came back from Germany with, with a few pairs. A few shops in Liverpool ends up getting them a, a month or two later. But that was sort of the start of like, wanting something that wasn't available. So I think it was April 81, Liverpool ends up playing there Bayern Munich in the European Cup. Probably three or 4,000 Scousers, Liverpool supporters go over. But about up to 2,000 must have been 16 to 20 year olds. And they were going for one reason, not the match, but to get a pair of trainers from Germany. I'm PJ, um, 42 and I've been following Everton since I was five. So back then, like, my nan, like my uncle's mum who I went to match with, she lived abroad and she'd send stuff home. She'd send like Bennett and shirts home and Lacoste jumpers, Laupina trackies that back in late 80s were under 100 quid. Um, Berg houses, Trango stuff that was like, the same price and I'd watch and, and kind of look at what my uncle and his mates were wearing and some of the stuff that you see in this um, exhibition as well to, to a five-year-old, it was kind of, we couldn't figure it out, like tweed jackets and cords and uh, like Timberland moccasins and all that. We, we just couldn't figure that out because to us, they look like teachers. I, I do now own a few of them now, prop, proper tweed jackets. When we were kids, we used to wonder what all that was about. From that early period, from like 1980 onwards, for five, seven years, eight, ten years, there was little firms of lads going over and bringing back bags of, uh, you know, Adidas trainers. Next minute, sports shops are opening everywhere. You're getting, you know, five or six in, on one street, and now you can't go down one street in town without, you know, being able to buy trainers in probably 20 shops. Grand Slam is actually a copyright for the tennis, so they can't put Grand Slam on them anymore. So, and that's been since the 80s, I think, late 80s. So it's one of them things, in it? If you knew then what stuff was going to become, like the amount of stuff I've just given away to like the fella in our street doing his garden. Yeah, I have these trainees. 30 years later, these trainees are worth 500 quid. You know. That Germany top, I used to have that. Like back when it came out, like Olympus Sports or something, 20 quid. Now it's like the holy grail of uh, like retro footy top. For us who were like, so I was 13 in 93. It was about shops really. So we were into Olympus Sports, Dirty Sports, um, and the stuff they saw, big bright sprayways and Australian trackies and and the big thing at that point, like if you were 13 in 93 and you didn't have an Adidas suede trackie, Terminator in particular, you were no one. Yeah, they're, they're like proper 90s looks that I would have probably worn stuff like that. It was all, it was all sportswear, Adidas AAC. But I suppose like where this whole movement affected us 10 years later is we would we were never interested in American stuff. Air Jordans, Reebok Pump, we just, it just weren't for us. And that's kind of the look every, these young kids from like lower league teams, this is it. This is the staple uniform look. Me and my mate, apart from the Adidas trackies we'd knock about in, it was never a uniform staple thing. We all looked a bit different. These probably just go to like the most expensive shop in town and buy the most expensive jacket and think that gives them something, but it wasn't, it was never a bad that for me and my mates. You see pictures of like lads, away fans, 20 of them, just all in the same jacket, getting, getting the badge in the photograph. And I don't think that was the point of all this. Like Liverpool has always been 
on its own. We, we think about what we want and we, we dress the way we want. There was no influence from style magazines. It was, it was a city thing. So it wasn't like, it's just, it's, if you're from Merseyside, this is how you dress. It wasn't if you support Everton or Liverpool. I never noticed that. When you look at the kids today, you know, they're, they're, they're not influenced by influencers on Instagram or, or even what London are wearing or anywhere else. They'll wear what they want to wear and, you know, t you know take on whatever style or fashion they think is thinks appropriate. They're not copying off musicians. Something's just happened organically. Like, no one sat down and went, right, we're going to grow Ketwigs and we're going to wear bubble coats. Let's finish the meeting there and everyone go and tell your mates. I, I don't know what's happened, but it's the same kind of ethos as this, isn't it? Just a different era.